So we're inside our composition and the first thing that you want to do is bring in the image that you're going to work with. So to do this, just go file, import, file and find your image. Drag it onto the comp. So in my case, I'm just working with this TV. First thing that we want to do is actually just control D on while we've got our image selected and duplicate it down here. And I want to grab my pen tool right here and mask out the screen. So to do this, just Okay, so we can see uh, I've just got a square here and I'm just going to go up to my pen tool, grab the convert vertex tool and I'm going to click on my vertexes and adjust them to make the curve slightly. So just drag it in. This does not need to be perfect. So if I go and switch this layer off, we can see we have our TV screen sitting here. I'm just going to switch these off for now. So I'm going to make the rainbow colors that we're going to see on our screen. So to do this, I'm just going to come over here, grab the rectangle tool and uh, drag out a rectangle just like this. Uh, just for visibility, I'm just going to change this to white. Um, it, do, it can be any color. So I've got one rectangle here and I'm going to click on this rectangle and press Ctrl D, it, grab our select tool and just drag it down. We want a little bit of overlap. And I'm going to do this two more times. Okay, and when you've got all of these done, just go over here, select all of our rectangles and we are going to add a gradient fill. Uh, so you can see we've got this gradient on here, but we want the black to be on the top and the white on the bottom. So to do this, while everything is still selected, just grab this and just move it kind of up. Um, you're probably not going to get it perfect, although that's fairly straight, but you can just come into this gradient fill. And while, with everything selected as well, uh, see mine is actually on zero uh, by miracle, but just select this and change it to zero if you've got a different number and that will just make it straight. So we've done this so that we can make a kind of seamless rainbow with all of our colors. So now I'm just gonna go through each gradient and I'm gonna change the colors of my gradient. So I'm just gonna start at number one, open this up, and change the gradient colors. I'm gonna start with black. I'm working with some specific colors. Once you've got your second color in there, you just want to copy this number, whatever that color is, press OK, and come into the second rectangle and edit the gradient here, and we're going to change this number to that second color. So just paste it in and then change the next one. And I'm just gonna do this all the way through. I've sorted out my colors here and I've actually just used the same color on the top as the one on the bottom. And this is because we're gonna add a repeater to fill up the screen. So if we just select our shape, I'm just gonna drag this, not too much to be honest, maybe just like this drag it up to the top of the screen. We do want to make sure mostly that this is overlapping the edge. Come into our shape layer again and press add repeater. If we come up here into the repeater options, I'm just going to change the number of this to 53 and the offset to minus 38. Um, you can see that we've got some lines here. What's happening is it's actually going off to the side. So come into transform and we're gonna change the position from 100 to zero. And now we wanna probably change this to about, oops, about 540. Yeah, see now we can see and we can just adjust this to bring it in so we've got no gaps. Okay, so I actually want my shape layer as well. I don't want it to be going down. I want it to be uh, rotated on the side. I want all of these to be diagonal. So to do this, come into the transform and I'm just gonna change the rotation to minus 28. And I'm just going to bring this over 
And I'll just scale it out a little bit. Now I want to make our lines move across the screen. So to do this, I'm just going to drag this up a little bit. I'm going to put a uh, click on the stopwatch right here to add a keyframe. And then I'm going to come to the end and I'm actually just going to click on this, drag it down to about, uh, drag it down to about here. Uh, make sure that there was no black there. So now, <clears throat> Looks like I'm going to have to scale this a little bit more. Now when I press play, we can see we've got these moving lines. All right, so now I want to actually distort these lines a little bit. So we're going to just, just close this, come over to effects and presets, and we are going to drop some effects onto this layer. First one that I'm going to grab is a turbulent displace. So just type in turbulent, grab this turbulent displace effect and drop it onto our shape layer. Then I'm just going to change the uh, displacement type to twist and the amount to 100. So this is what we've got. Then I'm actually just going to grab this and I'm going to press Ctrl D and duplicate it. Then on this one I'm just going to change the displacement type to vertical displacement and I'm going to change the amount to 500. Bring the size down a little bit. I don't want any of these lines in here. I'm quite happy with that. Uh, you can certainly make a few more changes. I'm just going to go to effects and presets and grab the CC glass. I'm going to drop this on. When I open the CC glass effect, we want the bump map to be shape layer one. I'm actually going to name this to TV colors. Okay, so this is actually taking those original diagonal lines and using the lightness of each color to get these cool lines effects um, coming down, which is what I want, but I am just going to change the, uh, the change the settings of this slightly. So I'm going to change this to 89.8 and I'm going to change the, the height to 64 and the displacement to 51. So when it plays through, it looks just like it's got a little bit more bump to it. Next, I'm going to go back to effects and presets and I'm going to type in CC Blobalize. I'm going to grab this effect, drop it onto our layer. And when I drop this down, I want to make sure that it is also set to our TV colors layer and make sure that this is actually set to luminance. Change the softness to about 100 and the cutaway to about 30. So when I switch this on and off, you can see it's just added a little bit more distortion. Um, because we are looking at a TV screen, well, we will be in a second. I'm going to come over to the effects and presets again. I want to give it that, like, the old lines that you see on the TVs. So just come here to effects and presets and type in Venetian blinds. Um, just grab this effect and drop it on. So I'm going to change this number to the transition completion to 18. And you can see we've got these lines here. I do want to change the direction. So under, under direction, we're going to change this to 90. I don't want it to be so thick. So I'm actually just going to change the width to five. Then I'm going to come down into the properties, go into effects, go into Venetian blinds, and I'm just going to put a keyframe on here. So on the first one, I want this to be five. So just put a keyframe here. And then I'm going to jump forward to one second and I'm going to change this to seven. And then I'm going to jump forward to two seconds and I'm going to change it back to five. So you can see when I play through, we're getting the illusion of this screen kind of flickering and moving now. But the problem is it just stops here. If I, uh, if I drag this out and we kind of play a little bit beyond that, it just stops moving. So to fix this, I just want it, I want this to loop. So to do this, come over to our uh, stopwatch, hold down Alt on the stopwatch, and in this box, we are just going to type loop, capital O, out. And this is the expression that we want right here. So just um, open and close brackets. And if we come up out of here, now when I press play, we can see that this just carries on. It's looping it throughout the composition. 
Okay, so we have our TV screen, we have, we are happy with the colors, and now we want to put this onto the TV itself. So earlier on, we created our TV screen layer. Okay, so click on our shape layer, come over to track mat, and change it to the TV with the mask on it. Make sure it is set to alpha mat, and this is what you will get. So now we can switch this background on. I want to actually just color my background TV image a little bit. I'm just going to just drop the effects on and I'll just show you after the numbers because this is going to look a little bit different for you. So these are the effects that I've got on my TV layer. If you end up color grading your image as well, you might end up using this color balance effect. Um, if you don't know color grading or if you're new to it, this is just going to affect all of the tones in the image. We always have a red, green, and blue, shadows, highlights, and mid-tones. So you can just go through and adjust these to adjust the look of the image. I will just switch all of these layers off so you can get an idea of how each effect is changing this. So you can see this is the original, then I've added a color balance to it, then I've just added a levels to it. Basically levels is just adjusting the lights and the darks in the image so you can uh, drag the whites and blacks up and down to change how dark or contrasty the image is. And the last effect that I added to this uh, layer was my CC Repertile. And this just makes basically made it so it's not square anymore. And uh, I was okay with how it did it. You can see that the edges are kind of stretched and dragged out. This was intentional for me. Um, it might not work for you if you want uh, something a little bit more clear cut, but this was a weird buzzy image, right? So I was happy for it. Okay, so I just want to integrate the screen a little bit more, make it a bit more glowy and bright. So to do this, I'm just going to um, pre-compose these layers. So grab these two layers, right click, pre-compose, and I'm just going to pull this TV screen. I want to make sure to move all the attributes and press OK. And then I'm going to come to effects and presets and type in radial fast blur. I'm going to grab this CC radial fast blur, drop it on, and I'm going to change this to brightest. I'm going to change the amount to 10. Next, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to grab the glow effect and drop it onto our layer. So come up here, change the threshold to 87, the radius to 119, and change the glow intensity to 1.6. Next, we want to come over to effects and presets and grab the liquify tool, drop it onto our TV layer, and we are just going to start melting our TV. So to do this, we want to come over we're going to set a keyframe on the distortion mesh and the distortion mesh offset. And if we come into our effects, we can see that we've got a keyframe here. You can adjust the brush size and the pressure here. So if I change this, you can see my brush size goes up. Probably want it to be a bit stronger. You can experiment with all the tools, but I'm probably going to use this one the most. And I can just start dragging it. So go ahead and do that. I will do the same and I will show you what I've got. So this is what I have ended up with. Uh, my one tip for this tool will be to work from beginning to end. Don't go to the end and then go back to the middle. Um, it will just cause some weird movement. So this is my final output. Um, I have just made a few tweaks on our base TV layer I just altered the levels slightly and I also added these particles. I'm not going to walk through how to add these particles but it is just the CC particle world effect and this is the numbers that I chose and I've also just added a fast blur on here basically copy and pasted it changed a few numbers on the second one changed the colors and also there's a fast blur on this one and those particle layers are also set to color dodge and I just want to do one more thing so I'm going to jump into this TV screen and I'm going to select our TV layer, press Control C, and I'm going to come back to this uh, composition, press Control V to paste, and I'm going to drag this up to the top, and if we switch it on again, you'll notice that this TV has some cool um, looking reflective things on its surface, so the windows in this case, um, and I'm just going to um, change this to overlay. 
and we can see that we've still got some of that reflection which just brings in a little bit more realism. So you might want to do this in this case if you maybe you're working with glasses or you are working with a TV or something like that. If there's some reflection there you could add that to the realism. Um, but what I don't like about this is I've got these lines here. So to fix this I'm going to go turn this back to normal and I'm just going to come in here and delete this mask. Then I'm going to grab my rectangle tool again and just come over here and mask this out and maybe just bring the mask feather up ever so slightly. So now I've got these lights and windows on the screen. I'm going to come back here and change this back to overlay. And here is my final render. Wishing you the best with whatever project you are working on today. If you like this kind of content, make sure to like and subscribe because I make After Effects tutorials on this channel. Go ahead and click here because this is the video that YouTube thinks that you should watch next. See you in the next one. Bye.